What? What's up with you? <laughs> Judgy eyes looking at me. If I took this out, you wouldn't care, like. You know, diabetes kills more people than nearly cancer at this stage. They're not far off each other. But no one seems to care about this stuff, do they? The oldest woman in the world is 124. She was 124 years of age. She, mo she smoked her whole life since she was about 13. Her telomeres were higher than most people's telomeres. The things on your chromosomes. Um, I just said I do that. I don't smoke. Anyone wants those, you can have them. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't want to come up going, I'm David Burke and I'm brilliant and all this kind of stuff. Um, I'm running the clinic for 19 years, since about 2001. And uh, I'm always looking for answers for people. And I just don't believe in the normal kind of stuff. And uh, I came up with the weed plan years ago. And with the weed plan, what I wanted to find out was basically where do things come from? I don't think the light can go off. I was sitting in the office one day and I said, I don't think the light can go off just for the hell of it. I think there has to be some reasons for it. And don't fully believe in magic. Not that kind of magic anyway, that it can just magically turn off. So I came up with the light bulb can waste. I can press the button on the wall and turn it off. That's two reasons. The ESB can cut me off, three reasons. Um, a switch can go or someone breaks a wire outside. I've never found a sixth reason why that light can go off. And I always give this talk when people come into me and some little guy on his dad's phone said, uh, he wasn't even meant to be listening, he said, what if a bomb went off? I'm like, jeez, he's after ruining my whole act now. Like, you know. And I said, uh, well, the bomb breaks the bulb, the wire, the switchboard. It breaks the same stuff. Like. And um, he said, what if an alien had a ray gun? I'm like, what does he do with the ray gun? He breaks the bulb, the wire, the it's the same stuff. So I have two parts to my character. I have a really arty side and I have a crazy scientific side to my mind. Like the intercross, and I think that's probably the same with everyone that turns up at these things anyway. <laughs> Without a doubt. And a bit of an odd character at times, as poor Trevor and uh, Mr. Painter will probably tell you as he started me off saying. So I'll just be myself, right? I'm running this clinic and I'm after seeing and I want to share with you a couple of stories. I'm after seeing children buried in their communion dresses in white coffins this size that had to cling their mothers off of down the cathedral, down the road, that the priest couldn't even have the guts to go up and say, look, you're there for three hours now. We need to just get you out of here. I've seen some horrible things in health. I've seen some amazing things in health. But basically, I've broken it down this way. Um, if you go to a doctor, they write out, number one, a prescription. So don't even look up at you anymore. It's not number one, a prescription. And uh, that's a drug. So if you're depressed, it's Siroxat, Prozac, Elfex, or Lithium. If it's your thyroid, it's Eltroxin. If it's your stomach, it's Nexium. If it's your heart, New Seal Aspirin, Sentinel K, Lipostat, Crestor. If it's your blood sugar, it's Glucophage. Everything the whole wide world after that is antibiotics, steroids, and painkillers. It's Christmas time. Give you an inhaler now. So the next person comes in. It's the same drugs. I'm going to be here for the night. If I go into everything in detail, I'd need an hour per thing, right? If you go to the doctor with depression, he's for, he or she hasn't found out, is it manic depression, bipolar depression, hormonal depression, anxiety, panic attacks, grief, guilt, or is it normally number eight, sorry for the language, is it normally just shit happens? It's normally shit happens. You're born a blank sheet of paper and along comes problems at home, problems in school, problems in relationships, things I should have done with life, things I never got a chance to do in my life. I hope none of you have these things in your life like me, sister-in-laws. <laughs> and my... <laughs> Yeah, I was going to leave that out. My wife is down there. I can't say that. <laughs> and I have a few sister-in-law, so she doesn't know who I'm on about. <laughs> but stuff hasn't happened. I've watched people dying. I, I'm honored to have it, to, to being there. Like, I've held people's hands as they died. It's a, it's a real honor. It's very moving for me to talk about. It. But I have done it, and it's been nearly like a hobby of mine. I don't know why. I don't know. My friends were off disco dancing and doing all crazy things, and I want to be sitting next to the people who are dying, talking to them, having the last chats with them and things. But what happened was... I've seen people's mothers and fathers get dying in hospital and I've gone in and talked to them and uh, people said to me they looked amazing like after and they, they died a few days after whatever and they said what did you say to my mom or what did you say to my dad but um, basically what happens is you're born the blank sheet of paper the beautiful baby and along comes all these problems at home and school and all this stuff builds up and people carry that in their bodies and when they die they look fantastic I was at a funeral with my, my own mother, 
uh, she was at the funeral and she points into your man in the coffin and says, is need a picture or a help? And I'm going, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, my shoulders are like this from laughing though in the back. I, I just have to, jeez, I have to get out of here. But basically he was, he looked like this old man. He died of a massive heart attack. He's 40 something years of age. He was a neighbor of mine growing up. And when he died, he looked amazing. He looked like a, a football star off, the, off a magazine. So we're not meant to be carrying all this stuff around. Do you know, it's not meant to be, it's not right. Everything I do it, at my side, which is this side, it's about, it's invisible stuff I'm interested in. And so are ye. It's all the invisible stuff. My big problem I have is, it starts with the leaving cert. How many A's did you get in your leaving cert? None. You're down there, a piece of dirt. And then you get three. Oh, seven. And you're driving Mercedes. Seven. Oh, my God, seven. My phone in my pocket can get seven A's in the leaving cert. It's a bloody parrot. Repeat stuff. Do you know, it, 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 it's ridiculous, like. There's a huge statement. I have it on further on this, and it says, and it means a lot to me. I sat down and thought about it for ages. There's not one drug on this planet, not one drug on Earth that cures anything. <laughs> no, that can't be true, can it? There's not one drug. But there isn't. I'll manage your diabetes, I'll manage your blood pressure, I'll manage your arthritis, I'll manage. Like, you're the, you know, so like, it's just manage, 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 manage. So the next part of this is, well, this in the shop. Imagine you got, don't listen to me and don't just look at me here and where we are today. Go into your own mind and imagine for real you got today's paper like me. And it said 100,000 cows in Ireland have heart disease. 90,000 pigs of cancer in Ireland, 80,000 sheep of arthritis this year in Ireland. Like, that's scary. What? What the? Like, that's, mad. that's madness. I, I must have read that wrong. 100,000 cows of heart disease, 90,000 pigs of cancer, 80,000 sheep of arthritis. And then the government says it's their faulty genetics from their stupid gene pool, from their stupid parents' genetic gene pool. And we go, yeah, that's a, you know, way. You're, you're not going to accept that. You're going to say, it's their food, it's their water, it's something you've injected into them, or it's something sprayed on the land. It's back to my light bulb. There, there's a reason. But you don't hear of 100,000 cows with heart disease and cancer and MS and ME and arthritis and all this nonsense. You don't hear that. For one reason. This top part is the doctor's part, as they say. Sick people are worth a fortune. Sick animals are worth nothing. Healthy animals are worth a fortune. Sick animals are worth nothing. It's the other way around. And we're the same. And everyone is frightened or we're dilly-dallying around it. I told you I was an odd character. I have a really busy lifestyle. I have a family. I'm, I, I should have been a, an aborigine out. And here I am with painted black shoes I bought for a tenner yesterday in Dunn's store so I can come in here. Had a stitch to wear. I, and then when I came in, there's a fellow up there in his socks and hippie fellas. And I said, fuck, I could have worn the stuff I was wearing yesterday. Walking the, <laughs> walk, walking the dogs, right? But, but you, they won't take me serious if I don't look like a doctor or something, you know. But here's the thing, like, and people say, you can't talk about the doctor like that, sure. The doctor is brilliant, and, and they're so busy, and they're, they're busy. Don't be talking. I went and met all those doctors. I went to St. James's, the Matter, the Beacon, the Bonds, Galway Clinic, Water Region Hospital. Name any cardiologist in the country. I've met them all. I've sat down with all of them. Um, if they're so busy, right, why is there a... I'm sorry for cursing kids. Why are they fucking ads on the radio every day? Come to the Black Rock Clinic if you're dying of cancer. Come to the Whitfield if you need a fucking hip replacement. I thought you're too busy to be. Advertisements mean you want to make money, right? Give us a break. The system is messed up. The reason I have any success in my clinic is because I'm a genius. No, is because the system is a mess. That's it. That, that is it. I had a brilliant one there a while ago. I wish I got that fella did the Beatles thing to do this for me. I, I, I spent the whole night putting them four squares. <laughs> <laughs> I got home at like two o'clock this morning from my office and I said, that fucking Trevor guy, I should have rang him earlier. And I, <laughs> I was nearly crying putting this together. But I run a clinic and I can do, I can play the piano. It's hard to stop and tell you how to, you know, I do it for real. Like, and I, I really want to just share with people. I found a couple of things. I'm going to shut up and get into the sharing part, into my side of the things. I have to give them a bit of a rap first. And then I got this message in my office that, uh, Trevor, well, you need to ring him urgently. And, oh, Jesus, like, I can't handle any more of this urgent stuff. So that to me is like, switch off every switch in my brain. I don't even know he exists now. Like, just ring up, tell me I won the lotto or something. And I, I'm saying this as a, a kind of an apology to him. It's like, oh, Christ, not another thing to... Because it's not nice. 
when you do kind of alternative stuff, if you heal someone, I know you're all into alternative stuff, if you heal someone with some herb there from a, some cancerous growth or something, and they died 40 years later, you killed them with your arnica. <laughs> but if they give him radiotherapy out the road and he dies in on the table the following morning, they did their best with the, you know, it's, it's not good enough. It's not bloody good enough. Um, another thing that has helped, because I'm always looking for answers, and I'm going to get this out of the way first. If you write a prescription, it's a drug. Same drug they give a child that height, they give a 20 stone bodybuilder man walking in the door to me. The same amount, I don't know how that works out. So then I write another prescription and you come back to me. And then you give out, they didn't work. And then I write another, my third time come back. I write, now you're a nuisance patient or nuisance client. So what do I do next? Refer you out to the private hospital. And I used to say, referral equals surgery. So it's not a drug, it's surgery. You know, let's cut your tonsils or your appendix out or your adenized grommets or whatever the hell is going on. But now it's not surgery. It's go out to the private hospital and we'll do every bloody scan you can come up with. Even if you went in with an ingrown toenail, we're going to give you a brain scan. And because it's covered, you've got your BHI card, we'll all get paid. And you'll be delighted you got all the scans. And at the end of the day, you'll still end up with David Burke because you still have your first problem you went into bloody the private hospital with. It's a, it's, it's a joke. It's not acceptable. And everyone is frightened. Um, do you do alternative medicine? I, I don't use the word alternative. I, um, I don't want to offend a doctor now. I do kind of in the middle stuff, like just whatever pleases him as well. I won't say anything. And it's a horrible place to be. And my hat's off to the two lads there. It's horrible because people who are into what we're into and wrote, wrote these books, I'm going to buy these books. They sound real interesting, right? Mad interesting. Um, people who are into this, we're all softies. We, we want to help people. We're hurt when we don't help people. I have a million cards. I definitely have about 5,000 cards of thanks for helping me, thanks for helping my son, thanks for helping my son. And the one card goes, your stuff is shite, or someone, I'm not on social media, but someone said, did you see what I saw on Facebook about you this morning? Someone said, your, your stuff is crap. Or, that, that ruins your 5,000 good cards, you know that. And if I didn't give a shit, and if you didn't give a shit, sure none of that would matter. But we actually do give a shit. And it took a lot of guts to set up this. I definitely know it did. And to do it, and hats off again, lads. Hats, hats off to you. I'm delighted to be here. Next thing they do. So it's a drug, surgery. Then it's in your family. And there's no way out of this. <laughs> Christ, everyone on my father's side are alcoholics. I'm in trouble, <laughs> like, you know. I, I, uh, do you know people get past life regression and they're all Cleopatras? Everyone on my father's side of the past are nuts, like. <laughs> Close your ears, kids down there. None of them went to Harvard. They're all crazy. They didn't have a chance to, but they didn't need to. Um, I met a guy who came into me. He had, uh, had 400 million quids worth of property. He was from Wexford. And the chap couldn't read nor write. He sold sausages in a room about as big as this stage. And then he expanded. And I'll be here all day to tell you what he did. It was really cute what he did next. And two hours after having him in with me, I had this guy come in from the WIT, Waterford Institute of Technology, with a cravat on him, gold cufflinks, and walks in the door and tells me he has two degrees in marketing and engineering. Like, do you really have to tell me that? Like, you know, what's that all about? But he did, he taught me that, and he couldn't sell me a biro. So I had arguments with a doctor the other day. Well, it was a good while ago. It was about six months ago. I was heavily involved in stopping uh, them taxing supplements. I got really involved in the background. I could write a book about it. And the argument with the doctor that you should get everything out of your food, you don't need supplements, you get everything out of your food, nobody needs supplements. I thought, well, that's really fucked up because the minute the baby's born, you give it a vitamin K injection. Like, do you know, like, it's a vitamin, you didn't get it out of kale, you inject them with it. They have a latest thing then, the doctors, it's uh, this new, new thing that none of you in here would have heard of to help the bones. And it's a new thing they do now when you go in, it's, they'll give you, don't tell anyone out, it's vitamin D. You know? <laughs> And rem uh, yeah, imagine that stuff. Like. And remember on the, on the ads on telly that uh, eat yogurts, eat yogurts, and drink milk, and do all this stuff, and get your calcium, calcium. I, I, from the 80s up to now, I remember those yogurt ads for my bones. And now they're saying, well, they were actually shite. You needed to add the vitamin D in as well. Now get the ones with vitamin D in it. And now it's K2 and vitamin D in it. Nobody, no human on earth could ever digest cow's milk because... They never had to. It digested itself. It was a live food. It was just digest, digest itself. Um, now it's ultra-high treated, homogenized, ultra-high pasteurized. 
Um, milk is meant to go off in three days, not three months. So you have people farting against it, but to be honest, you never had to digest it years ago. It just did its own thing. It digested itself down for you. Everything is different now than it ever was. I had a man in a while ago, and uh, came, I became friends with him. Become friends with everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and Jesus, am I really allowed to say this? He said I could say it. He's black, he's Nigerian, and he's from Nigeria, and he's living down by New Ross direction for about 20 years, and he got skin cancer here. And he said to the doctor, how did I get that? And the doctor ignored him. And then he said, no, sorry, doctor, how did I get the skin cancer? And he said, uh, the sun. <laughs> Do you know, the, the fucking thing, the sun. Like, and your man goes, that part of my body never saw the sun. What are you on about? Like, you know? And I'm, li I'm living in Ireland 20 years. I never fucking saw this, the sun in New Ross ever. Like. <laughs> but what he said next re resonated with me. He said, bread doesn't go off anymore in this country. He said, in this country, bread doesn't go off. Milk doesn't go off. Water smells like splash world coming out of the taps. <laughs> and he's like, he's right, like, you know. Uh, in your family means it's genetics. And I, I, all this thing here, the weed plan, where you cut the head off the weed, the weed always grows back. Sure, that's really, hum that's brilliant, isn't it? There's your lawn. You pay me to cut all the weeds off with my lawnmower. Does me 20 quid. I, I'm gone off. Guess who's going to be calling me next week to do it again? Me again. 20 quid, and I'll keep doing that. You have to get as corny as it is to the roots of it. I've never, ever, ever, I'm at this a long time, please someone ring me up if you, t tell me if there's another one, if there's a, a fifth one. This involves all the things you're into. It's even geopathic stress, emotional stress, chakra points, all that stuff. That's what I mean by, it's the stress of those things, right? But um, find me something outside of that, I, I'd be interested. In your family means genetics. So 200 years ago, the biggest genetics disease on earth was scurvy. And people's teeth used to get wobbly and sore. And they used to walk into the doctors with it, and the doctors would, they're killing them, their teeth, and they'd bolt their teeth into their heads. And then you went, oh, geez, that's great. Thanks, doctor. And you lived happily ever after for about nine months, because 10 months later, you're dead. Your gums and your heart are made of connective tissue, so the heart fell apart and you died. And then guess what they did? You had it, your mother had it, your grandmother had it, your daughters had it. It's in your family, it's in your DNA, in your genetics. And uh, killed 100 million Europeans down on paper, but guess what it was? It was vitamin C deficiency. So I was mad interested that if you cremated a human body, you turned to about 60, 60, 60 minerals, 14 vitamins and three oils and 20 amino acids. That's what we melt down to. And it doesn't matter, do you get them out of a bottle? Do you get them out of food? What food? It doesn't matter as long as you get them into you. If you're lacking one of those, they have 10 associated illnesses. So I actually learned more off of, from medicine off of farmers than I did off doctors, which is bizarre. Um, there was a guy who came in to me years ago from Carlo. He was about, he was hitting 80 years of age, real grumpy. His wife dragged him in the door. Men never want to come into you. He was dragged in the door to me anyway by his wife. And uh, he came in, I was sitting there, he, he'd rather be doing something else, like, you know. But he showed me this thing about grass tetany. I, I grew up in a street in Waterford, know nothing about farming. And uh, I said, what's grass tetany? And he said, cows die of uh, magnesium deficiency. Any farmers out there? No. Yes, yeah, so they might know, right? So I found it really fascinating that they die of magnesium deficiency. So when people come into me going, I don't want to take any, anything out of a bottle, I don't want to take anything out from a health shop, I want to get it from my foods. So what do I take to get magnesium? I should be able to say green leafy foods. But here's the problem. The bloody cow is eating green leafy foods the whole time and grass is green. So anything that has chlorophyll should have magnesium. And they die of grass technique unless you get a bottle of magnesium, stick it in their neck and they jump up and run off. In future, leave out a salt lick with magnesium in it for 20 quid and you'll get away with it. <coughs> so this interested me because I've spent my own money getting tests done on the soil where all these cows around different counties around Ireland where they've died of grass tetany. And I uh, came back with my soil samples, this thing like a, you put down into the ground and pull up a soil sample. And the soil was absolutely full of magnesium. Couldn't fit any more of it in it. So I didn't know what was going on. Met that old farmer again a while after and he said, uh, you need to get the grass tested. And there was none in the grass. We need 90 minerals, 14 vitamins, three oils, whatever it is, 20 amino acids. 
A plant needs three things to grow, 10, 10, 20, nitrates, phosphates, potassium. A farm used to be as big as this, and you put seaweed and ashes and manure and all this stuff, and the farmer got paid for the produce and the dairy and the shop and the people. We all lived happily around. This was all brilliant. All of a sudden, for the farmer to make the same few bob, it's as big as this whole hotel. He has to farm to get the same few quid. So not coming from a farming background, and farmers laugh when they look at me like I'm nuts, a pound of butter is probably two quid. I thought the farmer got 150 of that. That'll tell you how stupid or naive I was, right? I, I, they at least get a euro of it. Sure, they're out at six in the morning and I'm not even up out of bed and, and they're going, I'm going to bed at night and they're still out. They're always out working, right? They have to be getting paid an absolute mint. They get 10 cents or 13 cents out of it. The government is getting most of it. Like, it's nuts, you know? So everything boils down to price per kilo. They don't give a shite about your health. No one gives a shite about your health. They don't want you sick enough to die, sick enough to get better, just keep in the middle. So move this on a little bit, right? Uh, can I say in your head? In your head means you're mad, you're depressed, or all of those things. But, and you can be mad, and you can be depressed, and you can have all these things, right? And you can have anxiety, you can have all, but there's a reason behind it. You can go back and fix up the reason. It's not just give you antidepressants. When they're really, really and utterly stuck, I, I could be a comedian with this one. It's a virus. And it's not only a virus, it's an unknown virus that you can never find out about and never test for. So, and he does that with this amazing machine he has. He looks up like this, and it's a virus, you know. So what virus have you got that I don't have? I test for all these things. I test for infections and virus and toxins. I have ELISA kits. I'm very scientific. I have ELISA kits. You put a, a pinprick of blood in it, and within 20 minutes, if a line goes across it, you have H1N1 flu virus. So if someone comes into me snotty and coughing and choking and dying with pains and things, and it's the flu, and it goes H1N1 flu virus, and they go, yes, that's what I have that. And I go, watch this. We could test anyone in the room here at the same time, and we'll all have H1N1 flu virus. If the flu virus is out, everyone has it. How come I'm not affected with it? It is because my immune system is here, the virus is here. But that person that came into me, their immune system is here. 80% of your immune system is in your gut. So I'm going to start talking about the gut there in a minute. Like. Um, everything I do is invisible. You don't see, you see, this way I did this. You see the fags. I don't say that word even. You can see those, right? You can see the, the chocolates. You can see the alcohol. Do you want to blame? If someone had lung cancer and they were a smoker and they were an adult and they went into any of these hospitals and they go, that's the fags for that lung. I see kids that height dying from lung cancer. They've never smoked. What do they do? You know, it's not, it's not just the things you see. We're, we, we know that. Like, um, the invisible things are infections. You don't see infections. But I've tested people uh, with tests. Like people who come in and they're, they're on um, antacid tablets. They're on Nexium for their stomachs and things. And they're on them 30 years and I say, when are they going to kick in and work? <laughs> Do you know, if I, and I catch, if I gave you something for 30 days and you didn't feel better, you'd be giving out, you'd be ringing me saying, I bought a bottle of this off you and it didn't work. It's not meant to work. Um, toxins is real interesting for me. I test toxins and uh, for years I was finding Roundup in people. It was coming up as glyphosates and another thing called organophosphates. I had no clue what they were. Start looking into it. One was Roundup, the other was sheep dip. And uh, it's causing neurological diseases in people. And uh, it's crazy. Diet is, diet is my big one. Um, I'd love to talk an hour on all of these, but these two here are, uh, are the ones I just want to make some impact on you before, you know, before I leave it with you then. Um, medicine is disease management. It's not a cure and it's not a prevention. I don't want to just rattle that off. Medicine is just disease management. That's it, like. The new hospital in Dublin costs more than the new Twin Towers building that they're building. Think of that, like, that is mental. It's actually millions cheaper to build the new Twin Towers they're going to build, the new, uh, it's mad. It's going to mean the next hot I know, um, I said this already, there's not one drug on earth that cures anything. This is where I break it all down to. So I've kind of given out about the bad side, the whole rant about the... Now, doctors, right? For me, you're in a boat, and I'll jump down a few of these if I can, right? There's the boat. You're in a boat, and the boat is sinking, and there's four holes in the boat, and the water's coming in, 
so blood pressure tablet is for me a bucket. I call drugs buckets. So blood pressure bucket, and there's diabetes, glucophage bucket, and there's cholesterol, lipostat bucket. So it's just all these buckets. If you stop using the buckets, the water's going to come up. You're going to get worse blood pressure, worse cholesterol. So you're going to keep and using them for ages. I've no bother with that short term. But can someone fix the bloody four holes in the boat? <laughs> Do you know, at the end of the day, the four holes of the boat stem from your gut. So when the earth was made and bacteria and fungus and virus and all these started off, the next thing that hit our planet was pl plants. And plants lived happily ever after for millions of years on their own until along came insects and animals. And they decided to chew away, eat these plants. So the plant had to develop its own immune system. And a plant's immune system, they're called lignans. So if I was this animal, I'm eating this cabbage thing, and I'm eating and eating it, all of a sudden I feel sick or headachey or whatever. I don't want to eat any more of this, so I'll move on to something else. So then this new plant produces lignans, and that then gets me to, Jesus, I won't eat too much of that either, and I'll move away from it. So plants develop their own immune system. And when I'm testing people, the best thing is to give an example. I had a, a child came in, he was six years of age. His father was foreign national, and uh, the mother brought him in, and she was kind of a well-to-do kind of person, and... Uh, when, when he came in, he said, if I cut a potato and he touches his finger off it, he'll come out in blisters. If he eats anything with potatoes or crisps or things, he'll come out in hives and choke. He'll nearly need an EpiPen. So when I did my tests, I was mad to find this answer. And I found beta-1,3 gluconase. And that's in tomatoes as well. Like, so it's in tomatoes, it's in potatoes, and it's in bananas. So you can see it there yourself. And I thought... Jesus, this one would be delighted with this answer. I'm after figuring it all out. And when she came in with the young fellow, I sat her down and I said, I found out what this thing is, beta-1,3 gluconase. It's normally inherited from the male side of the family. You need to get them off potatoes, um, tomatoes, and the bananas. And she says, he eats a banana every day in school, and this is stupid, and your clinic is stupid, and your tests are stupid, and the banana does nothing to him. And I said, if you leave him on the banana, he's going to have arthritis in 20 years' time. And she looked at me and said, his dad got arthritis at 28, he's now 38. And the reason I'm talking about that is, these little things are in foods, and these are causing the holes in the boat. They're splinters that go into your gut wall. All the cells in your body, all the other walls in your body, like your skin cells, they're multi-layered. But your gut is only one of those tick, which is bizarre, right? It's one tick to let nutrients go into your blood so you can absorb them out of your food. This should sweat into my blood supply. It shouldn't just fall in as a hole through one of these little holes. Whatever falls in as a hole, you're going to become intolerant to. So then people rush to the doctors. We've done, the doctors goes, we've done allergy tests. You're allergic to nothing. Yeah, but nobody's allergic to anything. It's normally peanuts, shellfish, kiwi fruit. These are intolerances. They don't give you choking problems instantly and not normally. What they do is... There's seven systems in your body. They're going to mess up one of those on you down the road. They're not going to help. It's like putting a little bit of diesel in a petrol car over years. It won't wreck your car now, but over years, it's going to not help down the road. So what happens is, if there's the holes in the gut and these lignans are going in, if I go, that wall is naught and that wall is 100. If you're off down there, the first symptoms people will get is sinuses. Then they get adenoids, grommets, tonsils. Up around here is appendicitis. Up around here is hay fever, asthma. Up around there is arthritis, lupus, myogravius stavus, multiple cirrhosis. It just gets worse. But the difference between arthritis and sinuses or hay fever for me, there's no difference. It's an autoimmune reaction to yourself because you have bloody lignans out of foods going into your thing. Now people come into me and say, what do I eat? When do I eat? How much do I eat? How much water do I drink? When do I go for a poo and when do I pee? And I'm there, Jesus, that fly there actually knows all that itself. It's worth it fucking out. It's a, they, they don't have to come in and pay me money to figure that one out, you know. Just fucking work it out somehow. We're gone, we're gone so far away from being us, it's a, it's a joke. I don't do, and I, I, everyone should not do it. We're not. You can cut off my arms and legs and heart and lungs and liver and spleen and kidneys. I'm still David Burke. You can get rid of all my education. You can, I'm still David Burke. I'm more than the sum of my parts. So are every one of us. So is everybody. So... 
We stopped doing the leaving cert thing many ages ago, the leaving cert many ago, right? because if the doctors were so bloody good, how come arthritis is worse now? How come cancer is worse now than it's ever, ever, ever been? How come heart disease? The whole fucking country is on lipostatin and Trester and all these things, and guess what? With all, they're on cholesterol butters, cholesterol yogurts, cholesterol diets, cholesterol everything, and heart disease is gone now, isn't it? <laughs> Fuck's sake, it's worse than ever now. <laughs> There's kids dying in schools of heart disease. The Christian brothers in the school I went to didn't even fucking die of heart disease when I was in there. <laughs> but they didn't. Now they're all dying of heart disease. There's kids dying of heart disease. It happened in Newtown School up the road from where I work, a little 16-year-old catching a rugby ball. Happened down the road down in Water Park School, and it happened, I think, over that side. The three schools I could throw this to. Nobody in my school. Can you remember in your class, did anyone in your school die of uh, heart disease? Did the teachers die of heart disease? Did they all get cancer? Like, no. Guys, I went to school already dead of, heart, of um, cancer. And one fella, God bless him, uh, um, I actually ran for Ireland and I ran for London Irish. I got paid to run at one stage. And he's the only fella ever bet me. And uh, he died there last year or the year before of uh, riddled with cancer. I never saw him eat a jelly baby. He never drank alcohol and he never smoked. He never did that wrong. You know, that's why I'm going to start smoking. I'd hate to die of cancer and I didn't even smoke the bloody <laughs> things. For fuck's sake, that'd be so terrible, wouldn't it? Right, move on to a few of these things for you. Um, these are interesting. I do mineral analysis tests on people, but I'm going to shut up down the road and show you how you can do all this. I don't care what we find in someone. When, when someone comes into me, I, I, don't tell me why you're in. Let me see how I can make you fail all these tests first, and I'll have a red pen and write out all this, and then see how it matches up with why you came in. But otherwise, I'm only treating your symptoms, right? But um, this is a person in with me, and the zinc levels were just flat and uh, had all the symptoms of the zinc stuff. And the treatment was a bit like, I talked about grass tetany and the cow dying on the ground with all these symptoms and they die on the ground. If, if the farmer or the vet sticks a bottle of uh, magnesium, it jumps up and runs off. Imagine getting that cow and bringing it into the hospital. They'd have it on all sorts of scans and drips and everything and all it needs is bloody magnesium. So I did see a man, he was um, in a coma for eight weeks uh, out in an intensive care unit out in Water Region Hospital. And uh, I was asked in and I do iridology stuff and I opened up the eyes and I took a photograph and I said, he needs a magnesium drip. And a doctor jumps out of nowhere going, we've done his bloods this morning, we've done his bloods when he came in. And this fellow wasn't after seeing a doctor in about five weeks. There was nurses who were amazing cleaning him up and nurses are absolutely amazing. And there was guys from the friary blessing him every night with holy water which no, and I, won't, <laughs> I won't laugh. No, but amazing as well. And then the next thing happens is this doctor jumps out and he has a go at me. Just like they're having a go at you there. It's not nice. And there I went in to help the poor fella and I'm scared going in. I'm scared up on the stage talking to you. Do you know? It's not nice. So I went up and I said this anyway. I said, he needs a magnesium drip. He's lacking magnesium phrase. And doctor, we've done his bloods this morning. We've done his bloods when he came in. What would you know? You didn't go to fucking Harvard University. And then uh, I said, because I see a magnesium marking. And then uh, I said, oh, yeah, by the way, there's no magnesium in a blood test. You can take an Olympic athlete's a litre of blood and you won't find one drop of magnesium in it because it's not in blood. So he didn't know what to say. So his wife requested a magnesium drip. They gave him the drip, and as true as I'm standing here, three and a half hours later, he's up reading the Monster Express newspaper, all because of that farmer from Carlow who told me about a thing called grass tetany. It really started to change the way I saw things. Um, I'm the typical man, if I can't understand it, it can't work. So these Reiki people, that fucking thing just drives me mad. Then I see it working, and then now that I understand it, well, then that's okay then, right? Acupuncture is a load of crap because I see people with, I see people with mineral deficiencies, and I fix that, and they get fixed. And acupuncture won't fix zinc deficiency. Yeah, but fixing zinc de de deficiency won't fix some energetic blockage that's probably worse than zinc deficiency. So everything has its place, I started to learn. I saw a guy who couldn't breathe with asthma. He tried everything, tried all the minerals, tried all the vitamins, had everything perfect. He still had asthma. He went into an acupuncturist. He said, put your thumbs on the top of your ears, get the midpoint on the top of your head like that. He stuck one needle there, and your man just said, <gasps> and to this day, he has not had one asthma attack. But that's for weirdos, isn't it, acupuncture? It's like shamanic drums, or I may as well be just whistling and pointing at you to heal you. Because we all, a bit like that chap who, who, who did that Beatles thing, Christ, he got that together really lovely, I thought, like, you know. But um, 
a bit like you think, oh, this is weird, or there's all this weird stuff going in in the background. They're making it out now that, sure, look, I'm at a weirdo convention, talking to more weirdos, and they're make, but they are. And, and it's probably more normal than anything. It's, it's the other stuff is weird. See, I said I dodged the cancer thing, I'll be here forever. Cancer, right? Imagine I said, there's, I pay you money, and you're going to build me a wall. And I come back and go, I gave you 1,000 quid, where's my wall? And then you convince me, give me 2,000 quid, I'll build you a better wall. I give you 2,000 quid, where's my better wall? And then you convince me again somehow, there's floods happening in the water for the global warming, all this stuff, you need to give me another four grand because I will build you this wall that won't let water into your house. And I'm like, fuck, fuck, go on, there you go. And then I turn around, and there's still nothing there. With all their millions and millions and millions and millions on the cancer research in Waterford alone, or wherever you're from, cancer is now gone, thank God. Cancer is worse than it's ever, 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 ever been, ever. It's crazy, it's crazy. Do anyone here, just to help me out, right, show of hands who, who knows someone who's died from cancer? It's, it's fucking everybody. And, and anyone here that knows someone who has cancer now? Fucking everybody again. Listen it though. Hands up who knows of a cow that has died of cancer recently. <laughs> and not on about my sister-in-law, she's still alive. <laughs> no, but do you know what? If it's normal, it's acceptable. If it's normal, it's acceptable. I tested loads of people in Ireland who died of sudden death syndrome. They're all kids. Had awful clashes with their, had awful clashes with their uh, parents. I don't think I left it long enough. I just wanted to get in and do some tests. Like, I wanted to help. I wanted answers. And some of the cases, I didn't leave the time long enough. I, I have no comprehension of time, distance, or speed. I can tell you this one. So, so the thing is, uh, they were all on that aspartame stuff. Know that NutraSweet? Yeah. yeah, I can never say that word, right? And the, the next thing about it is, Donald Rumsfeld, the Secretary of Defense for America, he's the CEO of the company, Cyril. And Cyril are the company that own aspartame. And I've books in work because I learn about toxins. And in a book of toxins that has poisonous, venomous snakes, and it has arsenic and asbestos, the next page is aspartame, which is NutraSweet. And they gave the five monkeys in milk when they found it first. And it gave, uh, it, it, it gave, it killed one of them and gave the rest of them brain tumors. Um, they watered it down and fed it to mice. Every single mouse died of cancer, but basically. Then something happened. They put out this scientific research on it and it, to, to, to make it come ahead. And the scientific research then was, it basically gives everything bloody cancer that they give it to. So then they sacked all the scientists, handpicked their own scientists, set up the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, and it still wasn't working out until Ronald Reagan was sworn in as the president in 1981 of the year that Donald Rumsfeld, the Secretary of Defense for America, was meant to be looking after nuclear warheads. I think he's enough to be doing than promoting a sugary thing that's harmless. Uh, it tends to go to the brain and the heart. So if you're an athlete or child running around, it's going to get pumped to the heart. It's been linked to sudden death syndrome from day one. And if you're not an athlete running around, it's going to go to your brain. Now, it's also linked to ovarian things and other things. Uh, it's really strange. It's absolutely not a food. It's in a book of poisons. It's, it, it, it's, it's nuts. Uh, going down to the stress side of things. If I talk about stress, I said we start off a blank sheet of paper, beautiful babies, right, and all this stuff. And it all builds up over years. But what builds up over years is emotions. And again, emotions are, show me an emotion. I don't have emotion. You can't see it. So this is why we have the clash with, the, with society in the sense that they want you to get your seven A's and your leaving cert and do all your stuff in medicine. But how come a native Aborigine or a native American or, or an Eskimo, they don't have MSME, arteriosclerosis, heart defects, tumors, cancers, thyroid problems. There's not a million Africans dying of sun cancer until they come to Ireland. <laughs> Christ, like, that doesn't make any sense in my head at all. It doesn't, though, does it? Like, it, it, it's a crazy, crazy thing. Like. So basically, if Aborigines and all these people, they're not getting MSME, arteriosclerosis, heart defects, tumors, cancers, they must have studied in Harvard and learned all the ways that they didn't have to get that cancer and all those things, did they? Like, no, they didn't. They're just living natural enough and they're, they're into energies, and they divine for energies, and they know about ley lines, and they know about all these things. Our bodies resonate at 7.83 hertz or something. And they're bringing out, as you're on about, I missed all these lectures, but I look into all this stuff myself. They're bringing out 5G. I work in labs. If you want to give a, if you want to give a rat diabetes, you give it 
250 bloody gigahertz. You give, it the, you give what's coming out of your modem with this 5G, you give it that intermittently for about two weeks and it induces diabetic diabetes on the, the rat. That's, that's, that's mental, like. And now they're going to put those up on all our poles that go through all our concrete walls and can measure how many times you've opened the fridge and opened the microwave and flushed the toilet and everything. So they can sell that information back to the highest bidder that wants to sell you energy things and all that. It's, it's mental. But from a, from a health point of view, it scares me. It, 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 it's scary. But I, I, again, you're going into, we must shut up and not talk about because we're weirdos and frightened of technology. The bit that scares me the most about it is birds, songbirds. I drove from here to Galway in the summer and back down to Kerry and back to Waterford again. I could count five songbirds. I'm not on about crows or big raptor things or, or seagulls. I'm on about songbirds that you used to always have in the garden. There's not many of them around. They're resonating at that same frequency. There, there's absolutely, I, I put up containers to feed them all the time. I'm not getting the numbers at all. I'm not getting really any. Have a look around. It's actually really scary. <laughs> I think it's scary. Like. Um, stress causes no problems. Uh, it's your reaction to the YouTube video in your head of stress. And the best way I learned that was uh, if someone kicked me in the shin, the John Payne there kicked me in the shin, and, and the next day in my office I went, that John Payne kicked me in the shin is the D-A-S-T-A-R-D, right? And then in two days' time, if I think of him, I think, that bloody John Payne. And then in a month's time, I go, that John Payne kicked me in the shin. Ugh. And then even in a year's time, that bloody John Payne, fuck, might even leave him into my office and he kicked me in the shins, right? So he's not even here in my life anymore, and he's still killing me, we'll say, right? But imagine one of you came up and said, did your man John Payne come up and kick me shins? He did, yeah. Do you know his dad was a premiership footballer, and everyone in his family are premiership footballers, and kicking the shins from that guy is meant to be really lucky. All of a sudden, I'm, <laughs> I'm delighted now. I've just changed the thing up. So it's all mock, and we hold on to silly stuff. Remember I said at the start that my mother said, your man looked the image of health, and he was dead, right? He was in a coffin. He looked fantastic. Why can't we look like that before we're dead? Because <laughs> we hang on to stuff. And why do we hang on to stuff? Because I want to show you what they've done to me. You've hurt me. So we hang on. We need to let go of all those negative emotions. Just start reading Breda Gardner's things in the paper that I do every week. I won't say I hate her. My dad loves all her stuff. Never listens to any of my stuff. I, I listened to Breda Gardner's CD, and it was brilliant, the best CD. I, and he's listened to everything. He's so open minded. And he's listening to everything, and he keeps mentioning Breeder Gardner. Bloody Breeder Gardner, where are you? There, yeah. <laughs> and I've read her little things on how to let go, and I hate her little things on how to let go, because I didn't write them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm only messing with it. You know? But, but, but the thing about the whole thing for me, right, is uh, just go back here again with us. This thing for me is interesting. To summarize it up for me, right, there's seven... There's seven systems in your body, and I read the eyes, and I uh, actually learned a lot of the eyes, uh, met Breed at some of these things, and we had great crack at it, and we met some interesting people, but I read the eyes, and the eyes for me, there's only seven people I can see, and your eyes represent your constitutional type. So people come into me, and they go, everyone in, their fa in, everyone in their father's side of the family had stomach problems, but their eye is nicknamed the digestive eye, and um, a lot of the ones I'd see in Ireland are lymphatic eyes. It's their lymph system. And they come in with all these problems. And if you only fixed up the lymph system, in them, but no one gets back to it, there can be nothing else wrong with you. Go back to when I said the light bulb, it can either be this, this, this. Well, all in your health can be is that. There is nothing else. And there's a digestive system, hormonal, skeletal, nervous, endocrine, lymphatic, cardiovascular. You have seven systems. So no matter, if you came into me, I go, there's only seven systems. Can any of you out there point to where your spleen is? Or actually, do it the other way. Hands up who hasn't a clue where their spleen is. That's, and yeah, there's loads of you don't, right? I didn't even know I had a spleen, actually, for a, boy, <laughs> for a good while. But um, what to do and how do you clean it? Hasn't a clue. So how, how good luck with minding that one then, like, you know? Because we weren't shown in school. Sick people are worth a fortune. Um, when I look at the eyes, it shows me what kind of constitutional type they have. So people come into me like this, because you have to get it out of your heads. It's not all genetics inherited. There's epigenetics anyway. They're proven that you can actually change the whole thing with your thoughts anyway, right? But besides that, people come into me going, they have arthritis, and their father had arthritis, and their grandfather had arthritis, and their uncles have arthritis, and the 10 brothers have arthritis. And I go, had you arthritis when you were born? No. When you were four going to school? No. When you were seven making your communion? No. When you were 12 making your confirmation? 
21st birthday. No. Sorry for the language, kids. Your fucking father didn't give you arthritis then. Your father gave you the constitutional type that's prone to arthritis if you don't flush out. It's normally on the eye. It's oxalic acid diatheses. They have oxalic acid eyes, as I call it, and their body can't break down oxalic acid. Oxalic acid gets stuck in the kidneys, and it, the kidneys don't break it down. So instead of getting peed out as solution, it precipitates into where the joints are. Nobody ever tends to come into me with pain there or there or there or there. It's always here and here and here. And they come in like the pain, right? Um, I did a lot of Sean Kelly, the cyclist, um, professional cyclist. I got involved there through the running and stuff. He opened up sports doors for me. They go into a guy. He takes off their shoes and puts them up on a table and goes, Jesus, like your, 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 your ball and socket joint has to go like that and you're actually off to a millimeter the way you're wearing the shoes down. We need to show you this exercise to stop wearing the hips down because you're doing that a million times a month and you're gonna have a hip replacement by the time you're 30. Like. And they show them this exercise that they don't need a hip replacement and this is the exercise. They turn that leg that way, they keep their hips up straight like this and they just drag it in five times that way and five times that way before they go to bed and they watch the seam of their pants go straight down. Uh, it just goes, it straightens out over time. And I was there, and why don't you tell every woman in Waterford that because I've never seen so many of them getting hip replacement. I don't just mean women, like, but so many of them. There's so many of them, like, you know. Um, this is what I want to show you, right? Just so you have something in your heads going out, uh, if you have that now, this. You have seven systems, and all that can go wrong with them is they bloody go up or down. That's it. So you can have high blood pressure is bad, low blood pressure is bad, high cholesterol is bad, low cholesterol is bad. Too much copper is really bad for you. None will kill you. None is bad for you. So you have seven systems. They either go up or down. What the name of God makes them go up and down? I've never found anything other than infections, toxins, diet, and stress, the four things I spoke about at the start. And take into account that if you change your diet and all that, it won't fix certain things that energy medicines might fix, but the energy medicines won't fix if you're low in the zinc like I showed you. You need a combination of the, health is multifactorial. People have come into me and they have convulsions and you actually find worms in them. You actually find the, the eggs of worms. You find different bacteria and you kill off them. You give them a deworm them. We deworm a cat, a dog, a sheep, a horse. We don't deworm ourselves. I make homebrew um, wines and things and I have a picture on my phone. I should have stuck it on this actually. I meant to put it on that. And uh, yeast, and the next little sachet is yeast nutrient. The lowest form of life on earth is yeast and it needs vitamins. There's that amount of minerals and vitamins in, in, in yeast. It's thiamine, it's vitamin B1. There's that amount in goldfish food, dog food, cattle food, anyone into horses. They don't just eat grass, they're given mineral licks and mineral salts and all these things and nuts and all that. Human food, no minerals added. We're overfed and undernourished. I would love if someone retired me in other words, if we went back the old ways and just made proper bloody bread and butter and milk and water and things, water is, my father was a water inspector for 45 years. There's the reservoir. Do you know what they put in the reservoir to make sure it's not dangerous? Fish. They put little fish in there because there's not a machine on earth as a sensitive as some of these fish. If the fish float to the top, stop that water being used. Could, couldn't go wrong, right? So here's the fish here in the reservoir. They're not dying, they're not floating to the top. You have a pumping station here with all these chemicals get added to the water and there's the water we drink. And guess what? Catch any of them fish and put them in there and they're dead in an hour. Even a salmon is dead in an hour. And his, it's actually funny, like, <laughs> I need a new planet. It, 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 it's crazy. So stuff can go up and down. Ones that stand out for me is um, brain aneurysms. Here's the guy who did the Beatles thing. I know he mentioned something got kicked in the head and got brain aneurysm. Closes, besides that kind of stuff, right? But 99% of people who get brain aneurysms is from a lack of copper. That's it. There is nothing else. One of the guys who helped train me was a fellow called Dr. Joel Wallach. Did you hear of him? He did thousands of autopsies. He's the first man on earth to say a pregnant female needs folic acid in their diet and they laugh in his face in 1960 something. 1990, it was world standard procedure. Um, he was brought in, he did, did 16,000 autopsies on large zoo animals, and the time they were doing for Thanksgiving, they could do 500,000 turkeys per farm. They used to lose about 17,000 tur turkeys where they would die, and they didn't care, they just made dog food out of the bloody things, or burnt them, or buried them, they didn't care. A new law came in, you needed a vet to sign off each one, a dollar a piece. 
It was 17 grand for a vet to come in in an hour and just chuck him in with a JCB into a big container on the back of a lorry and drive off with it. They called in your man, Dr. Joel Wallach, and he did autopsies, which I thought was funny, on, on turkey strapped to a bloody table. <laughs> he found out every single turkey died of an, a, a brain aneurysm. He said, your food is so cheap, you've not added any copper. You need to add copper into the food. They added copper into the food, and not to this day did they lose one turkey. I said, what about women or people? It was always women I heard got brain aneurysm. Some girl down the road, for, she knew my sister, she died of brain aneurysm. I said, what about people with brain aneurysms? And he said, copper. And that was it. I said, you can't just walk away and just say copper. He said, no, that's it. The flexibility that's in your veins and arteries is there because of copper. And if your diet goes low on copper, you lose the flexibility, they will crack. And it, it's where that bulge goes and bursts. That's a brain aneurysm. And that's just because of copper. I told you there's 60 of those minerals. And each one of them, I could tell a story all day up on this stage about there. It's mad interesting. And guess where you get them all from? Sea salt. Every one of the minerals are in sea salt or Himalayan salt or bloody salt. I'm not trying to sell you here. Look like bottles of stuff. Or sell you not. Sell you not. Right then, let's summarize it up. Apart from me ranting at the doctors, the doctors are giving the buckets. Look, we need the buckets at times to get out of an old hole, out of the boat. But fix up the bloody problem as well. But you know, but they're not. So you have infections, toxins, diet, and stress. There's two things happen to your seven systems. These are go up or down. You have high blood pressure, low blood pressure, high cholesterol, low cholesterol. It's just that. And I told you, all that does it is infections, toxins, diet, and stress. I've never seen anything else on earth. I've seen people with arthritis because they had bone marrow infections or blood infections. I've seen people with arthritis because they had that kidney, the toxin in the kidney. I've seen people with arthritis, they had a deficiency in magnesium or chromium or strontium. I've seen people with arthritis because they had an intolerance to a food that caused an autoimmune reaction. I've seen people that had no infection or toxin or dietary deficiency or intolerance, but they're in a bad marriage or a bad job or a bad situation and they're producing cortisol. But I've never seen it at and other than that. Do you know, it's not, you're not born with these things and it's, it's just going to happen to you. If I could give you one simple bit of advice to, to, to just keep yourself clear of all this, avoid particularly two things. Number one, if it's on the telly, it's 10 grand an ad. Where's the fucking onion ads? The cabbage ads. You know, and number two is the big one for me. If it's scientifically proven, run away from it. <laughs> I'm actually a scientist. I've done all this stuff in science, all these things in science. If it's scientifically proven, why don't they scientifically prove garlic? Why don't they scientifically prove a bloody steak or something or an egg? Or why don't they scientifically? So if it has to be, they're going to bend me with science. Am I allowed to say companies' names or anything? I don't know. Danone has spent 350 million on advertisements in the UK and Ireland in 2001. Remember every ad was Actimel Yogurts. Your child is after rolling a dinky car through cat poo on your ground and rolled it on where you're going to make a sandwich. All these, oh Jesus, but drink Danone and it <laughs> fucking clears everything, right? There's all these crazy ads coming out, but everything was a bolster your immune system, bolster your immune system, putting it into people. They spent 350 million on ads. Every sec, a 30 second ad is 10 grand. You have to set up, it's 100 grand or something, I don't know, to get it started. And they were on every minute of the day. And then they made 750 million that year. And then take away whatever, they made about 450 million profit. They brainwash people. There's not a Chinese or Asian person on earth that's not lactose intolerant, four generations deep. Which means, if there's a, an Asian Chinese person born here, they can't have milk. Their kids can't have milk. Their kids after that can't have milk. And they after that can't have milk. And now Glan B is sending all this milk that are over to China. I'm going to make a stomach tablet to help them all and make millions however much. They're all going to be in bits with this. They're all lactose intolerant. So if it's on the telly uh, or if it's scientifically proven, be weary about it. And a pound of butter costs two euros to make and two euros to sell. There's not a big margin there really. <laughs> Benacol butter, 80 cents to make the tub and they sell it for a tenner, but they have to frighten the shit out of you with ads on the telly first. That's how they make the money. So you're better off, if your grandmother hadn't got it, or your great grandmother hadn't got, you don't need it. The body is the same as it ever was. There are certain minerals. If you cremate me and I'm there on the ground in a bucket, that's how much acid you turn to. About 60 of them are minerals, 14 vitamins, three oils, and 20 amino acids. Get those things into you. We should be eating for growth and repair, not for energy. We should be, we, everyone has a thyroid builder inside them. They have a heart builder. Every part of you, they've done the human genome project. The human genome project stated there's not one bit of your body older than seven or eight. Everything grows and repairs unless you, you weren't born with that thing, right? Like, so I want not born with hair, just to let you know. <laughs> Before any of you point at me at the end of this. 
I wasn't born with perfect eyesight ever. So if you damage your eyes, you're going to be in trouble. If you, if you lose all your hair like me, it's male pattern baldness, you'll probably be in trouble. And another thing you weren't born with was, um, what the, huh? Oh yeah, probably not very much stress, yeah. But I wasn't, you weren't born with eyes, so your eyes won't. So heart, lungs, liver, spleen, kidneys. If someone dies in a car crash out there and they donate their body, their liver's cut into three lobes and transplanted to three people. And tip wood, as long as they don't reject it, they'll all have a full liver in seven weeks. Everyone in this room's body, everyone's liver is seven weeks old. I shaved this morning, here's all back in my face. That's how fast you're going and repairing. So why do people get old and wrinkly and get before their time? It's normally, all the builders are in there. If I cut your finger, Fibrinage and blood clot factors, vitamin K, everything comes out and fixes it. So no, you don't have to, I went to Harvard and I said, get the fibrinogen from here and push it all the way. Not your body does it, like the Native American Indian, like whoever you want to be. So I'm gonna have to cut you short. So what, this man what? never stops talking. Shut I'll up. be talking at 10 o'clock tonight, I <laughs> swear to God. I'll give him five minutes, he'll still be talking. But I just want to get me point through, right? So, so <laughs> if, if. I rest my case. You, you were an hour late anyway. That's because we didn't know you were faking coming. <laughs> I could have walked the dogs out and tram over such a lovely day. You, you ruined me Sunday. <laughs> they had better things to be doing as well, actually. But just to say this, right, so if everything grows and repairs, why isn't it growing? What's stopping it growing and repairing? And it's basically, it, it's basically minerals. You have to give it the minerals. Like, it, it, there's no point in doing everything else right. If you, it's like having a plasterer in here and a carpenter in here. And He's brilliant at his job and the plumber's brilliant, but you don't give him any plaster or sand or, or, or wood. Sure, they just, they can't do anything. Give them, give them the minerals, but don't give them all the minerals they don't need. See, can you specify it out? Like I found out all they need is zinc. They don't need a truckload of vitamin C or something. They need a bit of zinc. I'm going to open up two questions. Anyone want questions? Not for my kids now. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, oh Jesus. <laughs> no, I've used GCs, oh, no. I've used HPLC, HPLC, high chromatography liquor machine. Like I've used all these things, right? Very expensive then. I was doing it out of my own. I wanted to find out, right? So what I've done is I got a thing called an, an, uh, a spectrometer and it sends a signal into your cells. So it's reading it from the cells. Uh, what's the name of it? Ligio lab. So it's, it, it's sending a beam. A spectrometer normally is I get a cuboid of you get um, a blood sample, you put in a cuvette, and you send a, a thing through it on a machine, and it gives a reading uh, at the other. It's a long, drawn-out process. So they've come up there a while back with, uh, um, it sends it into the cells on your body. Uh, do you know? I had a person in last week, actually, and his molybdenum levels came up instantly as being nuts, like really high. And I said, Jesus. And he said, what's molybdenum? And where am I? And I said, always well water, I said. He goes, I have my well water results. And he took out his phone and he went into his email and it goes unsuitable for human consumption because of min, uh, molybdenum levels. Like, Dunmore East is full of mol molybdenum. If I took in 100 people out of Dunmore East, girls, women, out of 180 of them will have thyroid problems. I think it's to do, I don't know what it is actually, but it's, it's strange. Like, if I took in a thousand, and I have tens of thousands of people I've seen in 19 years, if I took in a thousand people with breast cancer, 900 out of a thousand are blood type A. <laughs> They're always nearly blood type A, and they have serious problems with plastic. Boiling the bag rice and cling film and plastic kettles, it's xenoestrogen, and blood type A goes to ovarian breast and thyroid. Okay. I need this chopper. Anyone else? Yeah. 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 Um, Thank you very much for being s such a source of um, great knowledge and clarity uh, around health. It sounds, sounds incredible what, what you've assimilated. Um, but can I ask, um, I don't know if I missed the first part, but so if you've already talked about this, sorry, but um, uh, dementia, uh, it's an absolute epidemic of dementia now. Do you have any thoughts about that? Yeah, um, that dementia is a horrible disease. Like, uh, it's, it's rotten. Like, uh, it's worse, I think, than cancer and AIDS. And it's a horrible, horrible, horrible disease. Um, I saw a child a few years ago. He had a thing called adrenal leukodystrophy. And they said, he was six years of age, and they said, give him, uh, bring him to Disneyland, buy a camera, take as many photographs as you can, he'd be dead at seven. That was their answer for it. But he went on. It was that Lorenzo's Oil movie, you know. And sometimes dementia can be long chain fatty acids. Uh, I've done a lot of looking into now my own self, because I'm into microscopes and all that, into a, a bacteria called nocardus. And it grows on the teeth. 
and it plackens up the way. It plackens up all the, it's, it'd be worth looking into no cardus, I think, as a bacteria. So I go through the four things. If it's a, either an infection, a toxin, a dietary deficiency, or, or the stress. And I think when you're, when, if people kept coming back to me, I see people twice, let's say, if they keep coming back, you'd go infections and toxins. It's, it, we're just missing it. Dementia. Oh yeah, I heard. Yeah. Oh yeah, between sunblock yeah. and uh, Alzheimer's disease. Yeah. And I have to say, sunblock seems to be in everything. Uh, do you know it's in all yeah. uh, most creams mm. and that? But there has been established a link between sunblock yeah. and. They, uh, they, they've established. Um, see, because my head instantly does this. I know people who I had dementia never use sunblock. Uh, as well, do you know. So yeah. it's 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 multifactorial. And I'm only, I'm not doing this to be, I'm doing this for my own head, right? How come everyone doesn't get Alzheimer's that uses, you know, I'm only saying that to answer that. I'm always looking for an answer. But I, I think definitely it's another, for me, it's another hole in the boat. It's another problem, like. Yeah. But it's not definitive enough. Okay, folks, we're going to have to cut it there. Have David Burke, for, round of applause, please. Great talk. Thanks. Nice.